Hi everyone, have a look at this position. The black king has just been put in check and there's one drawing move for black. Pause the video and see if you can find it. Okay, hang on to that thought. Let's look at another position. So you're white, it's your move and you're winning. Your king is well placed. The black pawns are vulnerable, but there's a good move here. What move would you make? And hang on to that thought, let's look at a third position. So now you're black, you're about to promote the pawn there. Your opponent white has only one second left on the clock. You've got several seconds. What do you do? Okay, we'll come to each of those three positions as the video progresses, but let me back up. I want to look at this position which occurred in a game recently on Lee Chess. Uh, very strong players, the white player was a national master, and it's white to move here. Well, white has the edge because of black's isolated pawn. And we have a pretty familiar situation here that occurs a lot in king and pawn end games. Um, if the black king steps aside, the white king can enter. So if the black king goes this way, the white king goes up that way. However, when you do enter the position, sometimes your opponent's king enters on the other side of the pawn, getting counterplay. So for example, if the king steps to the left and you enter on e5, then this king can come down to c5 and maybe get some counterplay. Uh, or if the king steps to the right and you go to c5, sometimes the king can come down here and get some counterplay. Of course, not in this position. The pawn has that square covered. I'm going to say that the pawn has the door shut on the right side of that isolated pawn. Okay, so White's task here is to get that king to move to the side. And to do that, he has to win a tempo race. He has to make sure Black runs out of pawn moves on the queen side of the board. That shouldn't be too hard. Black has two pawns, White has three. So maybe White can make Black run out of tempo moves here. Well, there are two winning moves in the position. But the move I would consider first on instinct is the move b4. And the reason is that will shut the door on the left side of the isolated pawn. And now both doors are shut. And so if black runs out of moves with his pawns, his king will have to step aside, the white king will enter, and the black king will not be able to enter on the other side of the pawn, and there will be no counterplay. Well, let's analyze this in detail. So after b4, white is threatening to win the a5 pawn. So let's look at two possibilities. Maybe black pushes the pawn. Well, that's easy. White has another pawn in reserve. He pushes his a pawn, and now the black king has to step aside, and white enters, and it's an easy win. He's going to go after these pawns here. And black has no counterplay because that door is shut. Or if the king goes to the other side, White enters on c5 and wins this pawn, and again, black has no counterplay. Now backing up right here, another attempt, probably a better attempt, is to capture the pawn, but white recaptures, keeping both doors shut, and black has to move aside. Let's say black moves to c6 and allows the white king to enter. Well, black can't enter with his king, but he can try something here. He can take the, the d pawn and push it forward. And that forces the white king back to capture it, and then black can gain the opposition to stop white from entering. Well, lucky for white, he has this a pawn in reserve. That's going to gain him a tempo, causing the black king to step aside. Both doors are still shut, and the white king enters for an easy win. Uh, or, going back here, if the black king goes to e6, then we can enter uh, this way. And that's going to be an easy win uh, for the same reason. Okay, so b4 is a winning move, but there's a second winning move in this position, which is the move a4. Now this is a little harder to calculate, but let's go ahead and do it. White is threatening to take the pawn on b5. Black's best try is to take the pawn on a4. White recaptures. Black king steps aside to c6, and this does allow our king to enter. But we don't want to have to count this race. We don't want to allow the counterplay of black coming down to take on c3 and possibly promoting his d-pawn. 
while we're trying to win the g6 pawn. So there's a simpler move here, which is c4. And we're threatening to take on d5, so black has no option, he must capture. And when white recaptures, the kings are now in opposition, and black has to step aside. So black's best bet here is to go to the right, to d6. If he goes to b6, white can enter, and black won't be able to come into the position at all. So let's take a look at king to uh, d6 instead. Well, it turns out white can win this race. He has just enough uh, tempi to do it. He runs after the a-pawn, and the players try to mutually queen their pawns. But white gets there ahead of black, and now it's white's move, and he can easily stop black from promoting with queen to h1, for example. And white's going to win. So a4 is also a winning move uh, in this position. But neither of those two winning moves was played by the white pieces in the game. So the move that was played was actually a3, and that's a blunder. You can see the evaluation bar here on the right. White is winning, but after the game move, it's now drawn. It's an equal position. Let's try to find out why this is a draw. Okay, so black chose king to c6, allowing the white king to enter right away which he does, he goes after these king side pawns, and black then penetrates on the other side, on c5, getting his counterplay. Now wait a minute, after king to c6, what if white tried to shut the second door now with b4? Well, it turns out it's not good enough. Black can capture that pawn, and either way white recaptures, the black king can return to d6, and white has no more pawn pushes here, so he cannot get into the position. Black has the opposition. So shutting the door is too late at this point, so white makes a run for it. Black pushes forward to c5, which by the way was the only drawing move, and now white goes after the g6 pawn. Now here black found another only move. The only move to draw is b4. Black needs to get into the position. He cannot make any more progress with his king, so he has to break things open. b4 is the move. White captured, black recaptured, and white captured and called check. Now this is one of the positions I asked you to analyze and come up with a move for black. Turns out there's only one drawing move in the position, and black did not find it. The move is king to d6. The point of that move is this shuts the white king out of the e5 square, and so that guarantees black's d-pawn is going to promote. Let's see how the race would unfold. So white would have to take on g6, black pushes the pawn, and black actually queens one step ahead of white, and this position is drawn, the engine tells us. Um, black can easily, uh, black's got the first check here, he can probably pick off those B pawns with no problem. So it's a drawn position. Okay, so king to d6 was the way to go, but black made the very human move in this time-pressured situation. He captured the pawn on b4, and that's a blunder. That hands the win to white, and white very wisely stopped his plan of going after the g6 pawn and returned to attack black's d pawn. So very well played. Now black cannot take the b3 pawn and lose his d pawn because the white king would be too close to the king side pawns. White would capture them and queen and win the game. So black has to return back and protect his d pawn. So we have a situation here where both players have a passed pawn but white's passed pawn is better. It's known as the outside passed pawn because it's further from the center line of the board here. And when you have the outside passed pawn, you want to push it and use it as a decoy, which white correctly does. He pushes pawn to b4, check. And again, black doesn't want to take that and lose his d pawn. So he continues to protect his d pawn. And then there's a race to queen pawns here. White queens first, but black does get his queen, so it's not so rosy for white. Uh, white is still winning the position, though, because of his very well-placed king. 
These black pawns are very vulnerable. The white king is only a couple steps away from taking them, or perhaps at some point the white queen can fork the black king and the g6 pawn and start mopping up the pawns with his queen. So it's pretty easy victory for white. Um, white starts with this check, and now the black king should be careful here, even though it's a losing position. He should put up some resistance, and what white would really like to do is trade queens. If he can trade queens, then black will have no counterplay at all, and the white king should be able to mop up those pawns. Um, so, for example, black does not want to move the king to d3 because white would come to the d-file with a check and then trade queens on d1, and white would win. Also, the, white, the black king doesn't want to go to b4 because white would have the check on d6 forking the king and the queen, and again, black would have to trade queens. So black wisely chooses a different square. He goes to b3, and then white probes the king for a little while here with a couple checks, and then the black king goes wrong and steps to the b2 square. Now all the moves were losing, but this makes it really easy for white. And this is another position at the beginning of the video I asked you to analyze. So what move would you play here? Well, the move I would play is the one played in the game, which is queen to d4 check forking the king and the queen, just as we said, white is after a queen trade. So black's forced to trade here, and he trades by taking on d4, and then the white king is going to go over and mop up these pawns. Uh, however, black surprisingly puts up a little resistance here. He runs after the pawns himself, and he attacks this f4 pawn, which cannot be protected. However, the white pawn is clearly going to queen well ahead of the black pawn, and white has a simple win here. But white has only a few seconds, and he's pre-moving here, and he makes a mistake. He prolongs the game. The simplest move to make here is something like queen g1, and then just get over and blockade the pawn. Just get on that queening square, or maybe queen c4, and then get to that queening square. That would be the easiest way to win. Instead, uh, white delivers some checks here and drives the black king to actually a better position. And it starts to look like black has some drawing possibilities. For example, right here, black makes the very clever move king h1, uh, enticing white into a possible stalemate. If he takes that pawn, it's a stalemate. That's a well-known position. Uh, white was well-versed in this queen versus pawn position, though, and avoided the stalemate and checked king to g1, and then brought his king in with an excellent move, king to g3. This brings us to the third position I asked you to look at at the beginning of the video, and white had only one second on his clock at this point, and black had several seconds on his clock. What would you do as black? Well, what I would do is promote to a knight, because that will check the white king. He'll have to move out of the way. Black may be able to make several more moves, and white probably would lose on time. Um, but Black just queened, maybe he had auto queen on, and white checkmated. All right, so thanks for watching this video. I found that game quite exciting. See you next time.